Have you ever been to a conference where you prepare your paper, you submit it, you get through the process, you come along to the conference, there are four people on the panel, there are four people in the audience, you give your paper, nobody asks any questions, then you rush off to the next session because the sessions are really packed and you never have time to talk to anybody in the breaks. This is not what this conference is going to be. This conference will be focusing on interchange, on building the links, on drawing together people from very different backgrounds and making sure they get the opportunity to talk to each other. Hello young professionals from all around the world. Uh, Eddie Trustovich here, the Editor-in-Chief of IEEE Impact, the only official publication of the IEEE Young Professionals. Today we have a very special guest here in the studio with us, Dr. Greg Adamson. Uh, Greg Adamson is the Chair of the conference taking place here in Melbourne in July on the 21st century uh, impact of Norbert Wiener. Greg, uh, welcome. Thanks, Eddie. And I'm a volunteer with the IEEE Society on Social Implications of Technology. We're part of IEEE, which is a 400,000 member technical organisation with members in countries right around the world. In addition to volunteering there, I chair the IEEE conference on Norbert Wiener in the 21st century. This is a conference series that we commenced in Boston a couple of years ago, where Norbert Wiener was a professor for many years at MIT. That uh, conference was uh, a great success. It included uh, tours, or a tour of MIT and included a whole lot of other interesting engagements. The second conference is taking place in Melbourne in uh, July this year at the University of Melbourne, and that's also looking to be very promising. The reason that, uh, for me, the reason that this is very important is that Norbert Wiener, amongst 20th century technologists, was the person who really, really understood and spoke about the social impact of the technology he was developing. In particular, he was responsible for factory automation and the broader area of cybernetics. Cyber, cybernetics is now known as the cyber in everything, uh, and the work that he did at that stage has had, and the work that he coordinated with his colleagues, uh, such as uh, von Neumann and Shannon, uh, has had an enormous impact on the world that we that uh, we see around us today. Good afternoon, uh, Greg. Uh, why don't you tell us a little about your research work with the SSIT and the interest around Norbert Wiener? Thanks, Eddie. So the Social Implications of Technology Society is part of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. So IEEE has 400,000 members around the world. It's the preeminent professional organisation in the technology space, it, uh, particularly in those uh, computing and engineering uh, areas. And its concern, its tagline is advancing technology for humanity, which means that it's not just looking at standards and conferences about new technologies and what the latest thing we uh, that we can use or we can uh, play with or we can learn about is. It's looking at the context that that has in the wider community. SSIT is about that. And the conference on Norbert Wiener really draws out this uh, for those who don't, who haven't heard of Norbert Wiener, he's the guy behind cybernetics, and cybernetics is everywhere. Cyber is in everything today. This is the guy behind all of that, and uh, that's what we're working on. That's the, what the research is about. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the conference itself that you're running uh, in Melbourne uh, mid this year? Yeah, so we've started a two yearly conference series. The first of those was held in Boston in 2014, which was absolutely excellent. So we, uh, we had a tour of MIT, which is where he worked. Uh, we had a whole lot of speakers. We had people who'd known him, people who'd worked with him, his family, uh, people who'd been influenced by him. And it was, a, it was an excellent, con excellent conference. This time we're holding it in Melbourne, and uh, the Melbourne School of Engineering is strongly supporting that. And we're going to do work on a lot of those same areas, looking at uh, the impact of society that he spoke about, looking at the technologies he developed, and generally looking at the context of, of him and the history of cybernetics and cybernetics today. So the conference two years ago in Boston was uh, extremely successful and attracted some very, very famous people from around the world, including Bruce Schneier and the IEEE president, Peter Staker. Um, what, what was the reason why were they attracted to the conference so much? Well, it's interesting. Uh, so Norbert Wiener was born in the, in the late 19th century and died in the 1960s. Today, uh, his work is very interesting to people who were around in that period, but it's also interesting to people who are trying to understand the world today. Bruce Schneier, particularly, he, he's a, a world-leading cryptographer, very famous in his field, uh, and he's very concerned about the way technology gets used. 
uh, Peter Staker, a former president of IEEE, uh, was very keen on, under on a new generation of engineers and technologists learning about some of the some of the history and what he and what those past experiences can tell us today. And it's a lot. Very exciting. Now, thinking machines in the physical world is a very current topic. How does that connect to Norbert Wiener? Who did most of his work in the first half of the 20th century? So that's very interesting. Thinking machines in the physical world, it's about machine learning. It's about the role of machines. It's about the ability of machines to take over many jobs that humans have. It's about the ethics of designing those machines, the ethics of handing responsibility over to, over to those machines. It's about a whole lot of stuff which are really, a whole lot of questions which are really pressing for technologists today. Norbert Wiener wrote about these questions from the 1920s up to the 1960s. His book Cybernetics in the, the late 40s and Human Use of Human Beings in the early 50s went through this in a lot of detail. He, he said things like, the future is not going to be us lying in a hammock served, served by our robot slaves. So he was already thinking about what's it going to mean to have all of this automation done. And he did a lot of the maths and a lot of the engineering thinking that allowed factory automation in that period. He was looking ahead to see what, what impact that was going to have. Now, one of the interesting things about his work uh, is that it was by and large about 75 years ahead of his time, which is a pretty long time. So he wrote a, po he wrote a paper on polynomial chaos expansion in 1938 that couldn't be implemented in two, until 2000 because computers weren't fast enough to do it, uh, and which is now a substitute for Monte Carlo simulation in terms of identifying probability. Uh, so he did a lot of this stuff which is very early on and very, very advanced. And uh, so we're now, we're now moving into the world that he was describing. It's a pretty bizarre idea, but it's, uh, it is interesting and it's very exciting. So we're moving into the world of Norbert Wiener. <laughs> we're, we're moving into the world of everything cyber. So the July conference in Melbourne is promising to be absolutely huge, um, bigger and better than the past. Uh, who do you expect to see at the conference? Uh, any famous people? Well, we've got, we've got some keynotes. Uh, so we've got uh, Professor Brian Anderson from ANU who's going to be talking about the Wiener filter and where that went. And uh, actually, just to say the sponsors that we've got at the moment, it's the Social Implications of Technology Society, but as well as that, it's the Control System Society, because pretty well Wiener founded the field. Uh, it's the Systems Man and Cybernetics Society, both from IEEE, uh, we, because he was such a big influence in that area and, and, and cybernetics was, was his own, the only area that, that he pioneered. Um, so we've got some really interesting speakers and, and uh, as I say, Brian Anderson will be looking at where the Wiener filter went and, and what that means today. We've got uh, the IBM Watson team attending and they're going to be talking about um, Watson and, uh, you know, Watson won Jeopardy. Uh, Watson is now looking at dozen or probably hundreds of opportunities around the world to apply that sort of machine intelligence into, uh, into working industry. Once that happens, what's going to happen? Uh, that's going to have a potentially enormous impact on jobs in, in the world. Uh, we have uh, Dr. James Hughes from the Institute of uh, Ethics in uh, Emerging Technologies, who's going to talk about that. Are we prepared for that massive disruption? We have seen disruption in the past, but never so fast. The disruption has taken place over hundreds of years or over decades. What we're seeing in the next few years is going to strike us over a period of five or 10 years. As well as that, uh, we've got Professor Vid Vidyasaga uh, speaking about uh, systems and biology, which is an e a very, very interesting area. Uh, Wiener worked on, bio, on the biological sciences from the 90, uh, 1930s through the 1960s and a lot of that intersection of engineering and biology he sort of uh, foresaw uh, in that work. So uh, we've got, th and that's our keynotes, alongside that we've had good engagement from the medical community, from, we've had some engagement from the psychology community, from the mathematics community, uh, obviously from the engineering and technologists community, but as well as that from the humanities. Uh, we had a couple of panels on cybernetics and art last time. Uh, we've got uh, a very strong engagement with the, uh, with, amongst the writing community and the humanities. And so it's going to be a very, very interesting combination of people, quite an unusual gathering. So in hearing you say that, it seems that the conference is very multidisciplinary in its nature. Can you, can you tell us why that is? So today we, 
you see figures on big data. People will explain that you know, every year we gather as much data as we've gathered in the entire history of the world, and that incurs year after year or every couple of years, some very short period of time. We know enormous amounts about certain things. We, have a, we are fantastic, fantastic experts on, on particular silos, on many, many silos. What we don't understand is how these silos connect together. And there's nothing about big data, for example, that's going to, no, no computer without direction is going to suddenly solve those questions. The research that is fascinating today, the research that offers real opportunity, is the research that sits at the borders between those different uh, theories, between those different areas, between the silos. And that's, that is where we're going to make great discoveries. That is the, the really open uh, turf at the moment. Now, the conference is attracting uh, participants of all ages, young, uh, middle-aged and senior. Um, what can young professionals within IEEE and outside of the IEEE expect to get out of this conference and why should they participate? Right. So this is a very interesting situation. If a young professional today, somebody who's just finished their university degree, they're in their, or they're, they're towards the end of their university degree, maybe uh, they're doing their PhD, or they've just begun their, their early study, if they would like to have a career where they basically just did what their professors and their professors' professors did, then they don't really have to think about the future. They can just pick up the text, the old textbooks, and they can they can keep doing stuff. It won't be very interesting, <laughs> but you know you could decide to do that if you want an easy life. Um, for those who want an exciting, interesting life, they're going to have challenges like. Um, for example, one of the new IEEE uh, standards we're looking at is a standard for incorporating ethics into artificial intelligence design. Now that stuff is completely Norbert Wiener. That stuff is, this is really hard, is really complicated, and there's no roadmap. So young professionals who want to position themselves to be at the head of their, at the front of their profession in 15, 20 years time, you want to be going into the areas with no roadmap today. Because those are the areas where you're really going to be able to make a difference right from the beginning and where you're going to discover fantastic things. Thank you, Greg. Uh, just a final uh, question. Um, if you had to summarise in one sentence why people should attend this conference, uh, what would it be? This is going to be a very special gathering of people from a very wide audience and you will learn things that you will not learn anywhere else. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a very exciting conference uh, in July here in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, we welcome all of you to attend. Norbert is remembered for quite a few things, and one of those is uh, a set of letters that he wrote to the Atlantic Monthly, which was published under the heading, A Scientist Rebels. In those letters, he explains that he got a request from somebody to provide his mathematics and his knowledge to assist in the development of a weapon which, in his view, would kill innocent people. And he responded by saying, no, I'm not going to contribute that because I don't want to, con I don't want to kill innocent people. This was in the, in the late 1940s. It's surprising that this was the first time that a scientist engineer had actually made a public statement of this sort. Today, it's sort of you sort of think about it and you say, yes, that makes sense. But back in those days, it wasn't the case. And for this reason, he's considered to be one of the fathers of information ethics. Information ethics today is very important. We see cases of large corporations who lose their ethical direction and fake results and try to cheat regulators. Uh, this, is not a, this is not good. It's very important for us today to follow ethics. And it's, it's very useful to go back and look at what Norbert Wiener and other early champions of information ethics said uh, around the importance of ethics and the responsibility that we have as technologists. Norbert Wiener influenced a large number of people in his lifetime and many of those people uh, today are uh, very important leaders of their field. Among the supporters of this conference, when we began the conference series uh, four years ago, uh, people who expressed support at that stage uh, included Amar Bose, uh, who unfortunately died a couple of years later. Amar Bose was a, a student and then a collaborator of Norbert Wiener. And the work, he's, the work he did in building his music empire was based on the technologies that he'd worked on together with Norbert Wiener. 
uh, some of the other people, Vint Cerf, the co-inventor of TCP/IP, uh, is a supporter of the conference because of his con his uh, consideration for the importance of of Norbert Wiener. Um, Mary Catherine Bateson, the daughter of Margaret Mead and Gregory Bateson, two outstanding 20th century anthropologists, uh, is also strongly interested and was a speaker at, at our last conference. And we have a series, a series of other people who've, all, who've also been involved.